Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to use Nmap, or more specifically its GUI counterpart, ZenMap. So Nmap is a network mapping tool, and ZenMap just gives you a fancy GUI overlay where it literally passes the commands directly to Nmap, saves you typing it, makes it a lot easier to use. You can utilize Nmap on your home network to see what ports and services you have open on all your computers. As you can plainly see, ZenMap is rather blank. What do we do with it? Who knows? Not me. Oh wait, I do know. In here we can type a target list. You can use DNS resolution or you can type in an IP address. For example, a specific IP address, a CIDR subnet, so a slash 24 be from 0 to 255, or you can literally type 0 to 255, or you can type an asterisk which will mean 0 to 255. So there's a variety of options to type in for the target. Okay, that'll be the range I'm going to scan. Now to choose a profile. So there's quite a few options to use. The ping scan's just going to be a quick ICMP ping, or Internet Control Messaging Protocol. Just a basic scan where you might be able to get the machine name. So I found a few systems already. The intent scans will bring in a wider range of TCP and optional UDP ports. Or you can scan literally the entire TCP port range from 0 to 65535. You can choose not to have a ping. A quick scan will just be a small range of common TCP ports. Attempting a trace route, a regular scans, or a very slow comprehensive scan. The slow comprehensive and UDP scans will take absolutely ages. Well, now I have a bit of information here, let's look on a bit further of what we have on the screen. So there's a list of hosts and the possible OS on the left-hand side. Services won't be known just yet, not from a ping scan. Ports and host won't be known just yet. Topology. The topology shows a basic layout of what you've scanned in the network. And we can open up controls, zoom in a bit, make it a bit easier to see. Zoom in quite a bit, come on, pick up the pace. Ring gap, oh, there we go. You can click on individual hosts, change the layout slightly. So I know it's a bit unnecessary here with just three hosts on the screen, but you know, it might help you with a, a larger network scan. The details we don't know just yet. And this is the list of scans which I've carried out. So let's pick up another host. Now I want to start getting some more information. So what I have is a Linux server a Wi-Fi extender, a Windows 10 machine named Virus, and a Linux client. Let's see who is exposing themselves the most. So let's try for a quick scan plus. Oh, now we have some more information, and it's established an operating system. So we have a Linux kernel between version 3.2 and 4. So in terms of the ports open, so we have SSH, DNS, HTTP, and HTTPS, as well as the, well, they call it RPC binding port. The MAC address. So those first three hexadecimal pairs are assigned to a specific manufacturer, and in this instance it is a Raspberry Pi. Great, lots of information about it. Let's have a go at this Windows 10 device, that is dot .170. The quick scan focuses on the server ports, which is between 1 and 1023, as well as some of the known common ephemeral ports, which is between 1024 right up to 65535. Focusing generally on the lower end, I would say below 10,000, where a lot of them are named and against known applications. Look at that, it's open already, and we have... Well, we've only got some possible guesses here for the Windows operating system. So the actual answer is Windows 10, so... No, you haven't actually guessed it. Which is funny, because it's identified Windows 10 further down in the service. It does miss the blindingly obvious sometimes. So it does have a few TCP ports open. So what is the difference if I do an intent scan? So this time in the intent scan we have some more information. And we have some information on the SMB version numbers. Now I'll do an intent scan of all TCP ports. While it's running I'm going to go through some of the other options in ZenMap. <laughs> As you can see it's got about 11 minutes remaining. You can save the scan information, and you can open up a previous scan, print out the results, you can compare results that you've done on scans, Create new profiles. This is create new profiles for scanning. There's some types of TCP scans which you can do. Uh, feel free to Google these because that's more than I want to describe in this one video. 
The default scanning would be a SYN scan, which is along the lines of a three-way handshake where you go SYN, checking if the port's open, and then if it is on like the server, it would reply with a SYN ACK. Then you would reply ACK. That's like part of the three-way handshake. SYN, SYN ACK, ACK. But there are other methods of scanning you can do. ACK scan, FIN scans. These are some of the non-TCP scans. You don't get so many options on UDP, but that's because it's more of a crude protocol. UDP is fire and forget. You're reliant on ICMP messages being returned if the UDP ports are closed. So it does make it a longer scan to carry out. The timing options. Paranoid, sneaky, polite, normal, aggressive and insane. That's kind of how aggressive you want to be and how obvious you want to make your scanning. Ping options. Scripting. That's something I've never done before, so I don't really know much about it. So you can build up target lists and exclusions. Use decoys to hide the identity. Send fake decoy probes from spoofed addresses to hide your own. Yeah, I wonder what purpose that has. <laughs> Scan your own network, of course. Yeah. And there's some final options about timing and performance. So as you can see, hovering over each option does give you some output on the help side. I have to say it is an extremely useful tool. Probably just for home network scanning, most of your options you'll need are right here, just on the normal profiles. But if you want to do scanning against other people, not that I'm recommending you do, then that's where you might want to build up your own profiles. So with the intent scan of all TCP ports, we found a couple more that were open, 49667 and 7680. So for comparison purposes, I want to try an aggressive scan against that Linux box. I'm going to modify the scan slightly and boost the speed up from 4 to 5. So it should go a little bit quicker and probably clag up my network, but that doesn't matter. OK, I may have pushed my luck slightly because it says increasing send delay. But that's no problem, Nmap will work it out itself. Well, finally, the scan has finished and it's found one open port. And to be honest, that was one more than I was expecting. But it turns out that port 1716 is to do with KDE Connect. I had to double check using Netstat on the host. So that's it, that was a look at how to use Zenmap. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later. <laughs>